Hey Rebel Browser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. We're at episode number 1736 today. Thank you so much for joining me for it. Thank you so much for supporting the show, whether you do that just by listening in every day or once a week and binge listening or binge watching the show or whether you've gone the step further and become a patron of the show. I'm so thrilled to announce that we've crossed the 50 patron threshold. Thank you so much to KT Glitz, who became my 50th patron of the show Man, it only took four and a half years, and I got to think the next 50 are going to come a little bit faster. <laughs> I hope so. So, who's going to be 51? I'm so curious to see. You can possibly be that 51st person yourself at patreon.com slash SW7X7. All right, so we are continuing our sort of secret, not so secret, out in the open look at a sort of journey to episode 9, if you will, because... With the Flight of the Falcon series, as we've been talking about over the last couple of days, we're actually getting some information about events that take place in between The Last Jedi and Episode Nine, And the second novel in the Flight of the Falcon series, Pirate's Price by Lou Anders, has more of that information. It has more of what is on Bazin Natal's agenda for the whole situation, and the run-in with the title character of the story, Hondo Onaka. He, naturally, is the pirate about whom we're talking in the title, Pirate's Price. And this is spoiler territory, by the way. We're only going to talk about the Journey to Episode 9 stuff in here, not about the whole novel itself, at least not today. So if you don't want that spoiled for you, then save this show for a later date. But if you're okay with me getting into it because you want to hear it, you want to discuss it, then let's dive right into it. So... Bazine Natal, apparently, in her inquiries for the Falcon, she hasn't been able to keep it very quiet because the old rascally weak way pirate Hondo Onaka is already aware of the fact that she is on the hunt for it. And so he's kind of expecting her when she shows up on Batu. And instead of just saying, oh, you're after the Falcon, what's it worth? He says, nope, I'm going to tell you a bunch of stories about it. And naturally, Bazine wants no part of this but ultimately this is how she's going to have to play it in order to get the falcon and you know it's hondo's game hondo's rules and hondo of course thinks that this is going to cause you know help with justifying the price that he's going to ask for it but here's the part that you really want to know so chewbacca contacts hondo onaka because the millennium falcon's quad x power core is having problems and you know it's an old ship it may just fail outright and because of the fact that it's so old and also has been heavily modified and customized it's not exactly easy to find spare parts but if anybody's gonna know it's hondo and he says oh yeah i can do it for a price of course and so they arrange to meet on a planet that is not named in the book although we are told that it is in the outer rim and that it is a long way from batu where Hondo seems to have set up operations. So that much we know. We also know that he was there with his new partner, who Hondo refers to as Ray Somebody, which is a nice, a nicely done touch to the whole who is Ray business. And yeah, now Hondo deals with it is excellently handled. So good on you, Lou Anders, for that one. And Basically, Chewie sa drives a hard bargain, according to Hondo, and says that, you know, he wanted some ship uh, ship parts and tools thrown in for some friends of his, but who those friends are is not identified. You have to assume it's the Resistance, naturally, but beyond that, we don't get any other information other than Chewie saying, oh, and don't mind about the Porgs to Hondo, and Hondo, who understands a little bit of Shriwook, doesn't know for sure if he understands Chewie exactly <laughs> the way he thought he said, but yeah, Porg is a Porg is a Porg, but Hondo has never seen a Porg before, so he doesn't know, and naturally this causes all sorts of chaos with the Porgs, and you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll spare you that bit of it at least, uh, at least until the other episode where we actually talk about the novel itself. But the bottom line is that he's in possession of the Falcon while he's getting it fixed, and that's how Bazine Natal has come to hear that he's in possession of the Falcon. And he names a price that is apparently exorbitant, which she doesn't blink at. And he says, all right, I'll sell it to you. No problem. And so 
she takes off with it and you think he really sold the falcon holy cow and naturally of course there is some sort of double cross that's happened it turns out that one of hondo's associates has hacked the communications signal that bazine sent to meet with her you know contact to get her paid and intercepted the situation so she lands on a little planet and meets somebody who's contacting her who then sends her some money and you know tells her yeah all right go pound sand and so she takes off and the contact of hondos takes the falcon back to batu and so you know they're like oh what do you think this could be a problem and he says no nah, i don't think it's going to be a problem because she just took a bunch of money for selling this thing to somebody who wasn't really trying to buy it. So the original buyer, whoever that is, and is not named in the book, is going to be really mad at her for not delivering the ship and for selling it to somebody else. So this appears to have taken Bazine Natal out of the equation. And, you know, I was a little surprised in a way because the Flat of the Falcon series seems to suggest that there are going to be more stories told in you know future dates and whatnot and probably leading up to episode nine so i'm surprised that she was disposed of in the second book in this series but yep she was so they must have other stories that they want to tell and i have an idea about what one of them could be and we'll talk about that after the break stay tuned this episode's brought to you by Audible. You can get your free trial at sw7x7.com slash audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E. I've been checking out the audiobooks for Star Wars on Audible since the reboot of the canon with A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller. And every one I've listened to, I've enjoyed the heck out of. And now they're coming out with an audiobook exclusive, Jedi Lost, that's going to debut on April 30th. So the only way you're going to get that is by getting the audio version. So you might as well get a free trial for Audible and get your hands on it. You can go to sw7x7.com slash audible sign up and when it comes out you'll be all set welcome back so where is this going with this whole hondo anaka thing well one thing it seems to be leading into is the galaxy's edge theme park ride because at the end of this story hondo is putting up signs for his anaka transport solutions business and saying that he is wants to hire flight crews and so that's going to be basically exactly the situation that park visitors arrive in when they show up on batu so that's number one number two it is made perfectly clear that the you know ship was sold to the resistance or at least what they're framing Bazine Natal for is for the idea of her selling the ship back to the resistance and Hondo in his way is basically saying yeah I'm working for the resistance they need a few good scoundrels in their ranks and so that's what I'm up to and you know in talking to one of his partners he says did you know I was you know a big deal at the liberation of Lethal which naturally refers to his work in Star Wars Rebels and of course the answer back is yeah yeah you've said that a lot basically <laughs> so it's entirely possible by this token that Hondo Anaka could show up in episode nine and you know whether they really do it uh I don't know it would have to be certainly with somebody who is you know doing the performance and with Jim Cummings doing the voice because you can't separate the two at this point I mean I know they've done it with other people so I guess it's possible who knows maybe they decided to make Richard E. Grant the old Hondo Onaka. I suppose that's certainly possible but be that as it may, it's yeah, it's still an open question, but we do know that he is willing to help the resistance, of course, at a price always, but certainly doesn't seem to be the kind of scoundrel that, say, DJ is, where DJ, you know, is available for a price, but has no particular allegiance to anyone whatsoever, whereas if Hondo had to choose... I think he would pick the resistance every time, especially if the money was about even. <laughs> so that is going to do it for our show today. And thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And I hope you'll consider helping to bring this to more people by supporting me at patreon.com slash SW7X7. Until tomorrow, it just remains for me to say, may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. 
podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.